Hey Simon, hey, I'm Ryan from LostInReviews.com. Nice to meet you. First off, what's with the uh, Lorenzo's oil reference? Uh, it was just something Nick said in the office one day that made us both laugh that someone could have a name which is the same as a, a heart-stopping uh, drama with Nick Nolte and uh, Susan Sarandon. <laughs> well, you're going to freak sci-fi fans out with uh, you know, all the references in the movie and then just throwing the Lorenzo's oil in there. There's also references like capturing the Freedmans and uh, Easy Rider and uh, yeah, there's, there's, it is the, the, the very much the child of all its progenitors but there are other little nods in there to strange non-related titles that just make us laugh, you know. I know you're definitely driving me crazy with that. <laughs> but it, it's like a, a film geek's uh, kind of trivia game watching all your films. I appreciate it. I think it's funny. Sometimes the people find ones that aren't there. It's like someone said, I like that uh, Blues Brothers reference. And I was like, that's not in there. I think because we make a few references, uh, people assume that everything is a reference. Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, there are less than you think. <laughs> nice. Uh, so ha when, you, when you took the shot at the creationists, what what... Were you afraid of getting any backlash from that? No, because it's not supposed to be that. It's, but the, the idea was that we, Ruth had to be a creationist because she had to believe in a very rigid sort of belief system, which is still, you know, it's, nothing has proven it wrong. I mean, there's, there's evidence that, it, that it's evolution, sure, but people, as far as the people with faith concerned, it's still very much on, on the table. But if you saw an alien, it would suddenly change that, you know. In the imaginary world of this film, we wanted uh, someone who, uh, who, who had a particular way of seeing the world to be changed in a flash and then have to learn how to swear. And it was just, rather than being some kind of like statement about faith, which is not, it was more about uh, crowbarring silly swear words into the script, which were quite funny. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed all the intense cursing coming from uh, Kristen Wiig. Yeah, it just struck us as funny if someone could be utterly reborn morally, you know, and, and the kind of comedy value in that. I think, you know, I grew up in a fairly sort of Christian household, I think, and I went to a cathedral school, and everyone I remember from that period had a sense of humor. I think it's, people get, people treat people with kid gloves too much of the time. Most people have, have a sense of humor about stuff, you know. This is, you know, and if, if, if the world is that way, then we'll go to hell for saying such things, and they'll have the last laugh, so. Right. <laughs> well, I would love to join you in hell if that's where we're going. Uh, but I heard that you, uh, to prepare for this, you had road trips. We that you took? road trip across the U.S., yeah. We, we went from uh, uh, L.A. to Wyoming, uh, to De sorry, to, to Denver, actually, in an RV and uh, saw the, did the trip that Graham and Clive make, and it was extraordinary. Any funny stories from the trip? Oh, the whole thing was just like an adventure. We nearly died like three times. It was, uh, the weather was intense. The landscape was awesome and amazing. We, we hit a bird, which we do in the film. We run into some rednecks in the, uh, in the little alien that scared the bejesus out of us. That happens in the film. Loads of stuff went into the script, you know. I also enjoyed the Bob Dylan reference yeah. immensely. Yeah. Who came up with that idea? I can't remember. I, I think we just laughed at the idea that... <laughs> I don't know what it's saying, whether Bob Dylan's actually dead and a zombie or something, I don't know. But it was just, um, it was just Paul going, isn't he? Which we laughed at a lot, you know. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Thank you for everything you do. Not at all. Enjoy Thank it. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nick. Hello. How's it going, you. man? Uh, that was my first left-handed Hey, shape. I'm a right-handed guy, too. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you're complex. <laughs> I know, I'm very strange. Yeah. So thank you for taking a, kind of a shot at the creationists in Paul. Uh, I'm not sure we do. I've been trying to get you guys to say you did. Well, we didn't, so we're not yeah. going <laughs> to. Okay, uh, with Paul, you guys went on a road trip. Uh -huh. What's one of the funniest stories from your road trip? Funniest? I mean, we crack up a, a quite a lot, you know. Uh, there was... A moment in Soldier Summit in Utah when we were losing our shit because a train came very close to us and we didn't realize it was there. It was snowing quite hard and then, you know, from our right, literally 10 feet away, there was the noise of a giant freight train. It just emerged and I was so frightened that they all laughed at me for a long time. Man, yeah, Simon told me you guys almost died. We did almost die a few times. It got down to minus 50 at points and, like, deodorant would freeze in bottles and... Uh, yeah, at one point we had to go and stay in a motel. It was so cold. And then we destroyed the RV, so... How was it uh, making Kristen Wiig cuss at, like, a mile a minute? Great. Uh, yeah, uh, she, you know, she's pretty good at it herself. Uh, she, she, she brought quite a lot to the party. It's not all our, our work, you know. So do you want to take credit for the amazing Bob Dylan reference? Yes. Awesome. I don't necessarily think it was me, but I'll take credit if you want me to. Yes, I, I enjoyed... Uh, Simon taking credit for it as well. No, no. I think he will. No, he, uh, he gave you credit. Oh, well, uh, then it was Simon. All right, awesome. Uh, 
So with Paul, what was your favorite movie reference that you threw in there? Probably capturing the Freedmans. I enjoyed the Lorenzo's Oil one. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we took the day off when we wrote that. I think the very fact that uh, someone could be called that, you know. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to mess with a lot of sci-fi fans with that. Yeah, good. I hope you know. I hope they. I just hope people enjoy it. You know, if if people come out of here a hundred minutes later with a big smile on their face, then I think we've maybe done our job. Right. Well, I definitely did when I saw it, oh, good. and I appreciate everything you guys do. Oh, good. Thank you very much. I'm a huge fan. Good. Thank you for doing the interview. I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's do the right hand. Come oh, on. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Oh, it was good, right? Yeah. First off, thank you so much for Adventureland. Oh, man, thank you. That's very kind of you. I worship that movie. Oh, that's really nice of you. Thank you, man. Uh, so how was it stepping in for Edgar Wright on the team? Well, terrifying. I didn't really, that's like, you know, I think Edgar's a genius, and I knew I could really... A failure was my only option, but Simon and Nick made me feel like, like the like, like family. They made me feel like they were totally supporting me, and they said, "Make it your own movie. We don't want it to feel like Edgar directed it." And you know, they're like, "Do your own thing. Don't you know? Don't try and uh, recreate." I couldn't anyway. I don't have his skills. But to me, I thought the big challenge that I really was excited about was getting like a C, getting a, like a um, method acting performance out of a CGI character, someone who's actually kind of a laid back, real acting guy who's a good actor who listens to the other actors, get a CG character to do that. Because CG, you know, the even the animators, they want to give you the most bang for the buck. They want to make him do so much stuff because they can do anything. And I was just constantly in the beginning saying, no, no, he's doing way too much. He's got to act like a human being. That's the joke of the movie. He's just like us. He just happens to have a few special superpowers. Um, so I tried to apply whatever I would say to an actor and say it to a team of animators, and it, that took a year and a half. It's like trying to give an actor direction via Twitter or something, but you know, we got there, I think. Yeah, no, you totally did. I, I can totally see a lot of Seth Rogen in Paul, and he yeah, feels, yeah. it. You, you, you forget that he is a CGI character. Oh, that's cool. I mean, that's that would, to me would be the greatest thing, because most CG is meant to impress or be a real spectacle or look really super cool, and that's all great, but this is a movie, this wasn't that big of a budget, and most of our money went into this, the animation, so uh, it was weird to spend all that money and have me say to them, no, make him just sit on the couch and scratch his ass, but that's what a guy would do. He, seemed, he needed to feel like an ensemble player, so it's very nice to hear that you know he seemed to feel, you weren't thinking about the CG stuff. I, I enjoyed Paul so much. Uh, definitely enjoyed Adventureland. Thank you very much for doing the interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ryan from LostInReviews.com. Hi, hi. Nice How does it feel to be double booked with Bridesmaid and Paul back to back? Uh, what if I said it was really bad? That would be horrible. Oh, yeah. um, I'm elated. I'm, 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 I can't even believe it. I'm really excited to be here. I feel very lucky, very happy. OK, which one's your favorite? You can't ask me that. <laughs> I just asked you to pick one of your... Them, uh, in two different ways. Okay, so what was it like to work with uh, Judd Apatow? It was great. Um, it was great. I, I worked with him and, and knocked up, and then after that he asked me to write something, and so it just kind of came from there. We've been working... Me and my co-writer Annie have been working very closely with him for, oh my gosh, a little over four years now on this, so... It's very... I'm very happy that it's finally come together, and it's actually in a theater, and there's people here. Yeah. So, were you a little nervous about taking a shot at the creationist for Paul? Um, in what way? Uh, just in the light that they're shown in Paul. Um, you know, no, because I don't, I don't think that it was done in any negative way, or um, they're not, I don't think they're making any like grand statements or anything. I think they just um, thought of a really interesting character to put in the same room. As an alien, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, and it was really fun to play. And it wasn't just you know, the girl in the movie that wasn't doing anything. They they gave her a really great and interesting perspective. Yes, I definitely I, d I loved your character, especially with the one eye. Oh, I know that wasn't easy. <laughs> Were you bumping into things on? Well, no, it's just after you take the glasses off, you it was a little, yeah. A little off. Yeah, it was a little off. But I run into things anyway, even when I don't have glasses on. Nice. Well, thank you for doing the interview. I appreciate it.